My turn. Um, this is a continuation of earlier this year. I gave a talk about project-based infrastructure as code and why the way y'all are doing it is wrong. <clears throat> um, this is not going to be as difficult. This is more just one of the tools that make it easier to do so because once you break up your huge monoliths, you have to be doing this more often as part of, let's see, I'll do, oops, ah. Damn it. As part of the reason for is software, software development best practices. Um, go over this again because it's part of the intro, but if you're writing infrastructure as code, write it as code. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, we talked about before um, microservices is one of the reasons I chose, I went with project based. Uh, today we're going to just going to work on some of the tools that make it easier. Uh, Atlantis uh, is one of, is the primary one, and tools are always part of quality. You always want repeatability and automation. So um, where Atlantis falls in, presentation, zoom, do that. Uh, is you is there's a firewall between your actual production environments, your deployment environments, and all your code. Uh, a lot of people actually do this PR-based workflow for infrastructure as code, um, but they wind up doing it in their their build system. So GitHub Actions or GitLab uh, workflows. To do that, you wind up giving the keys to your kingdom to GitLab or GitHub or GitHub, and GitHub and GitLab are managing your production deployment environments, which scares the shit out of me. <laughs> uh, so I don't do that. We have Atlantis instead. That's this firewall in between. Um, with that, you build your, oop, there it is, your workflow as a PR. Um, so let's just do a PR. Uh, I don't, uh, it, the way that it takes two people to do, I'll show you later. So I just have pictures instead of stepping through it with you. But um, developer throws his code into develop. Uh, he wants it in the dev environment, so he'll create a PR. Uh, in this case, this is, this is duplicating prod into a hotfix environment. Um, you create a PR to merge into dev. Uh, and with all of those commits that it took, which is actually pages and pages for this one, and Atlantis is tied in, so it detects a PR has been started, automatically does your Terraform plan, which you sh should know how to do uh, if you're doing, uh, Atlantis just handles it for you. Nobody has to even have access to the deployment environment at all, including me as a, an approver, but, I mean, somebody does, but, <laughs> but Atlantis is the only one that has, has, it, uh, has access to even read-only. Uh, it does, that apply and you can explode it and see exactly the Terraform plan, exactly what's going to get created. That's important for doing the PR part. Your approver is expected to actually look at what's being created and make sure you're not creating Bitcoin miners on, a, on my infrastructure or um, doing incredibly dumb things. Uh, so, before Atlantis will even think about what you've done other than planning it for you, it requires an approval. Somebody has to go in and approve. Um, Atlantis doesn't care who, but with, uh, we do GitHub. Uh, with GitHub, you can actually control that with your code owners and normal Git flow. But you can control who does the approval, but Atlantis doesn't care, it just wants one. Do, do, do. Once it's approved, all you have to do is tell Atlantis to apply it. Uh, and it does exactly what you expect to happen, uh, Terraform apply, and things get created. Um, uh, like I said before, a PR workflow is pretty common for doing IACs, uh, but people do it wrong and 
give GitHub access to their AWS environment or whatever. Uh, this is how you do it correct. Um, and I'll go over some of the details. Uh, if you look, uh, Sir Beep, uh, GitHub.com, Sir Beep. I have everything. My present. That's why my slideshow was a Git, Git repo. Everything is where you can find it. Um, some of the details. <laughs> uh, I'll just go over some of the details of how I'm using Atlantis. Uh, you can install it pretty simply and just have it do parse your PRs, do your applies for you. Uh, but I have gotten <laughs> pretty in depth. Uh, let's see, first I have my build pipelines. This is a much simpler version, but if you take a look at, at it, all I have to do is push an update to my, one of my Helm configs or to my Docker file or whatever, and it will build and start a deployment pipeline. Uh, some of the other things I do with my deployment pipelines, there is a step where I apparently since I can't find any documentation on it, is GitHub environments. Here it is. No. Um, GitHub also has a method for sign for approvals and sign off in a work workflow. Um, it's via environments. So QA actually has to go click approve before I can go to prod with it. They have to test and verify it works in dev. Uh, some other things you'll see is a lot of checkouts because the actual deploy is nothing has access to a cluster. The deploy is a GitOps state repository. So all I do is put the chart I want into, well, this is complicated as hell, but this is just for retries. So if there's, if you have project base, you have many different things doing it. So if five things try to deploy at once, there's gonna be, well, the retry is how you do this equivalent of like a semaphore, make sure you don't have any problems with multiple people doing it. Um, the actual meat of Atlantis, uh, I do not, is, um, I th think you can find an Atlantis Helm chart um, on the Atlantis, Terraform Atlantis site, um, which you can start with, but most of the details I can hammer in just values, and this is the important bit. Um, Terra Grunt, I use open, open Tofu instead of Terraform, because Open Tofu, what the second it, it forked off, it got a lot, it got a rocket boost of advancement. It is going far faster than actual Terraform is. Um, and where is the sections? TF errors. Um, here's where the details on how to get into the QA environment, QA TF errors. Um, part of the workflow is seeing which, what your target branch is and, decide, and looking in, in files that Atlantis has that the developers do not to see what role to assume, uh, what uh, various details that are so high level it's not worth doing the uh, remote state like I showed in the previous talk. Um, very basic details like subnets and VPCs, and that's about it. Um, <clears throat> so not only do developers not have access to the accounts, they don't even know what the account IDs are. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else is good to go over? Um, uh, let's see, I said GitHub's our beep. All of this, um, I can't really go over in detail what all of this does, but you can easily get to it all uh, and take a look. It's, here we go, repo config. Um, find out the environment, the br target branch, base branch name, echo prod, and then gets that, uh, the values from up. So, uh, let's see. Lambdas, uh, let me think of what's important bits I've missed. <laughs> if you got questions while I uh, we'll try to remember what I'm missing, because. <laughs> is it Atlantis, is it SAS service or do you have a instance? 
Um, I deploy it into a very private cluster into a specific account where I can do correct role-based access. Uh, you do not put uh, a lot of another thing people will do wrong is when they do their Atlantis or whatever, they will put keys and secrets to each of their accounts all over the place. And to do Terraform, you pretty much have to be an admin, and that is incredibly stupid. Um, you, and not just I did a key and a secret, that's stupid as of itself, but these keys and secrets to all of your accounts all over is very bad. Um, if you ever are creating some automation and you need access in an environment and you find yourself creating a key and secret, stop because you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you should always be doing role-based authentication, um, like doing the git ops uh, where, where I push the image into my ECR repo that is you create an OICD, OIDC provider in Amazon to trust your specific repos not to so github just assume this role to push my image that is correct security <laughs> role based um, Atlantis also is in a place in Amazon where I can give it a very secret very secured um, role that uses IRSA in the cluster to map that role into a running container. Uh, that is where it then has access to do assumes to all the other accounts. That was a good question, because when I interview people, I say, okay, you're doing something across account. How do you want to do it? Oh, I'll go create a key. No, stop. <laughs> Um, I showed a picture of what Atlantis is. Um, Atlantis really, I mean, it has a lot of setup for finding Terraform and for applying Terraform, but it doesn't do Terraform. All it does is execute out Terraform, or in my case, Tofu, which is much better. Um, what Atlantis does is it is the firewall between developer stuff, code, which is infrastructure as code is, belongs there, and actual production environments. Okay. So uh, uh, you, prob you probably weren't here. My first talk was at the beginning of the year, um, was m the importance of smaller project-based um, IACs instead of most places I have found have one huge Terraform that does everything in dev is in one Terraform. And then when they get it in dev, they're happy with it, it's tested. They will copy paste from dev to another huge Terraform, which is prod. And copy paste is not what you do, good code. You have automation. <laughs> so this is automation. I do, you've got your code in, in develop branch, merge to dev, and Atlantis will take care of those resources for you in the dev environment. And if you've tested and QA signs off, um, Possibly I'll do a talk on the advanced step from environment to environment, but that's GitHub action stuff, and it's even harder to explain than this. <laughs> but, um, but if QA signed off on it, then it goes and creates another PR for you to go from the dev branch, which is the state of dev, into, pro into QA next, our prod. And then does the plan, does the does need requires approvals again to make sure it's sane. Thank you. You're welcome. And since you missed the first or uh, in an earlier, um, it's serbeep dot uh, github dot com serbeep. Freaking! I'll just do it again. You should be able, there's uh, the presentation slideshow, the examples of how to create the Terraform and um, use uh, remote states so that you can have small projects instead of one huge monolith. Um, and thank you, my album cover. <laughs> And PR Pipeline is the one we were just going over with all of the in-depth code about getting Atlantis 
not just running, which is pretty easy, but running securely and the way I want it to in my environment with the repo plan. You got a question? Um, yeah, ask more questions because it's pretty dense because I'm going over the tool setup instead of the process. I can go back and go over some of the um, Terraform if, for the people that missed last time. Um, no, the this repo, that build process was the first part I went over, is built and deployed via GitOps. Um, it builds into a Kubernetes, um, into a container, builds into a pod. Um, uh, Git the GitOps repo is nothing but a lot of us, used to be one huge Helm, Helm chart with a lot of subcharts. Now it's just a lot of Helm charts and Atlantis is one of them. Um, but Atlantis is in a special cluster where very secured things are. Um, if you looked in my actual corporate, Atlantis is in, everything is namespace, there's DevOps, this is my tools, this is in a DevSecOps. It is way off to the side. Um, you had one. How did the pull request get access to the um, That is, uh, when, when you're looking at um, Atlantis, the basic Atlantis setup is create a webhook. Uh, it's just a webhook in GitHub. Whenever you create a PR, it webhooks to Atlantis. And everything is, what's the tool, Probot, if you use? Yeah, it's just type Probot, type um, webhooks back and forth between Atlantis. Huh? Repeat the question. Oh, it was, ask, it was asking how does Atlantis know about the PR? Um, Create the PR as part of the basic setup is check, check a webhook. Uh, the webhook calls Atlantis. Is that all? You can set up two out for the for the for the roles. Yes, I mean you set up two FA to if you're actually getting into the account yourself. I mean Atlantis, it's. It, it's security is it only it only listens the webhook it only is going it's going to parse that and make sure it's your repo um, you can be very specific about what what repos you want it to listen to I actually have a naming convention not just in my organization which is all private but also the repos have to be named specifically as well then Atlantis will say oh yes I can do that um, <laughs> And the OIDC I mentioned before, you never use keys and secrets. You don't give GitHub any keys and secrets to. It's Atlantis has, is in a cluster that has a IRSA, which is role mapping from AWS IAM into a service account. And that also is very secure. Huh? Oh, is your mic not working? You, you want to know about the, um, the security of using two-factor Two-factor auth, which, which I was pointing out, it's not really a th necessary a thing because it's, it restricts what it does based on who's trying to do it and what it's, what's being done. Um, there is one step that I may or may not do a talk on is policy enforcement. Um, if you actually go start looking into automating your IECs, look into pol policy enforcement because you have to enforce providers. Uh, any random developer could go and say, instead of AWS provider, my provider is github.com, my personal slash something, and execute whatever the hell they want. That is very bad. You do have to have policy enforcement to, to police the providers being used. All right, and, if anybody's got questions, we can keep Brian up here. Yep. Afterwards.